Welcome back. This is a long ass chapter. Section, excuse me. B O M S chapters. This has sections. All right. Um, 41. Behold, here is wisdom. Aren't you glad you tuned in for this? Here's wisdom. Concerning the children of Zion, even many, but not all, most of them, um, they were found transgressors. Therefore, they must needs be chastened. So that's how everything went wrong. Human failed, failures, uh, sin. Okay. 42. He that exalteth, him, exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that abaseth himself shall be exalted. So they're being contrary here. Okay. 43. And now I will show unto you a parable that you may know my will concerning the redemption of Zion. 44. A certain nobleman had... Oh, we're going into parables. That's right. A certain nobleman had spot, had a, had a spot of land, very choice. And he said unto his servants, Go ye unto my vineyard, even upon this choice piece of land, and plant twelve olive trees. Sounds like this, they pretty much said this before, but I'm not. Well, I think it was in BOM, okay. 45. And set watchmen round about them and build a tower that one may overlook the land round about, because you got to guard them all of trees. You know. To be watchmen upon the power, upon a tower, that mine olive trees may not be broken down when the enemy shall come to spoil. And take upon themselves the fruit of my vineyard. Okay. Yeah, you need guards for your olive trees. <laughs> yeah. And fig trees. You might have some Messiah come and go. What? No fruit? It's cursed. Just think about that for a second. Jesus is all about life and resurrection, but he withers a olive tr a fig tree out of season. Wouldn't it be interesting if he'd said, hey, it's out of season. Want to see a miracle? Boom! Figs. Fruit. Pow! A miracle. But no, he had to get all destructive. Like these enemies you need watchmen for. Okay, anyway. So they're watching these olive trees. Excuse me, we'll get to this. All right. 46. Now. The servants of the noblemen went and did as their lord commanded them, and planted the olive trees, and built a huge, no, built a hedge round about, and sent, sent watchmen, and began to build a tower. Careful, man, they might confound the languages for that. Uh, 47. And while they were yet lying the foundation Thereof, they began to say among themselves, And what need hath my lord of this tower? I mean, it's just twelve olive trees. I mean, what the fuck? It doesn't make sense. I guess that's why I'm an infidel. All right, 48. And consulted with, uh, consulted for a long time, saying among themselves, What need hath my lord of this tower, seeing... This is a time of peace, and it's only twelve fucking olive trees. They better make a lot of money to pay for all these guards. Or is it that they have slavery back then, they don't have to pay anybody shit. So we got to feed them. 49. Mine, uh, might, might not this money be given to the exchangers? There is no need of these things. 
50. And while they were at variance one with another, they became very slothful. And they hearken not unto their com the commandments of their Lord, and that's not capitalized, it's that, that nobleman guy. 51. And the enemy came by night and broke down the hedge, and the servants and the noblemen arose and were affrighted and fled, and the enemy destroyed their work and broke down the olive trees. That was their mission, I guess. Let's get them olive trees. They couldn't have been very old, though. They're probably just saplings at that point. 52. Now, behold, the nobleman, the lord of the vineyard, called upon his servants and said unto them, Why? What is the cause of this great evil? Which one? 53. Ought ye not to have done even as I commanded you, and after ye had planted the vineyard? It's not a vineyard, it's an olive tree orchard. You didn't mention grapes once. They got grapes too, that's what it is. All right. And built the hedge roundabout. Maybe it was a hedge of grapes, although that wouldn't have kept anyone out. <sighs> And set watchmen upon the walls thereof, built the tower also, and set the watchmen upon the tower, and watched over my vineyard, and not have fallen asleep, lest the enemy should come upon you. Good thing this is a parable, because it doesn't make any fucking sense. All right. 54. And behold, the watchmen upon the tower would have seen the enemy while they were yet afar off, and then could have made ready to keep the enemy from breaking down the hedge thereof and save my vineyard from the hands of the destroyer. Maybe. Probably not. 55. And the lord of the vineyard said unto one of his servants, Go and gather together the residue of my servants, and take all the strength of mine house, which are my warriors, my young men. And they, that are of middle age also, among all my servants, who are the strength of mine house, save those only whom I have appointed to tarry. 56. And go ye straightway into the land of my vineyard, and redeem my vineyard, for it is mine. I have bought it with my money. I bought it with money. 57. Therefore, get ye straight away into my land, break down the walls of mine enemies, throw down their tower, and scatter their watchmen. How does I get back your olive trees? And maybe your grapes, if you have any, since it's a vineyard. Somehow. 58. And inasmuch as they gather together against you, avenge me and mine enemies. Uh, avenge me of my enemies. That, by and by, I may come with the residue of mine house to possess the land. Fifty-nine. And the servant said unto his lord, When shall these things be? Sixty. And he said unto his servant, When I will, go ye straight away and do all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Biatch. I need to say the last part. Fifty, uh, Sixty-one. And this shall be my seal and blessing upon you, a faithful and wise steward in the midst of mine house, a ruler of my kingdom. How does this have anything to do with Jackson County, Missouri, and them being dispossessed of it. <coughs> Just wondering. Did he forget to build a tower? Is that it? <sighs> 61. And this shall be my seal and 
Blessed be you, a faithful and wise steward in the midst of mine house, a ruler in mine kingdom. 62. And his servant went straightway and did all things whatsoever his Lord commanded him. And after many days, all things were fulfilled. 63. Again, verily I say unto you, I will show unto you wisdom in me concerning all the churches, inasmuch as they are willing to be guided in a right and proper way for their salvation. 64. That the work of the gathering together of my saints shall continue, that I may build them up unto mine, my name upon holy places for the time of harvest to come. And my word must needs be fulfilled. Damn it. 65. Therefore, I must gather together my people according to the parable of the wheat and the tares. That's a favorite of his. He's repeated a few times already. That the wheat may be secured in the garners to possess eternal life and be crowned with celestial glory when I shall come in the kingdom of my Father to reward every man according to his work as his work shall be. So, 66. While the tares shall be bound in bundles and their bands made strong, that they may be burned with unquenchable fire. 67. Therefore a commandment I give unto all the churches that they shall continue to gather together unto the places which I have appointed. <coughs> 68. Nevertheless, as I have said unto you in a former commandment, more repetition here, uh, let not your gathering be in haste nor in flight, but let all things be prepared, be prepared before you. Okay? 69. And in order that all things be prepared before you observe the commandment which I have given concerning these things. Okay? Seventy. Which saith or teacheth to purchase all lands with money, yours preferably, which can be purchased for money. In the region round about the land which I have appointed to be the land of Zion, for the beginning of the gathering of my saints. Is that that big land scandal that he had that led to his death? I think we're almost there, aren't we? It's getting good. 71. And the land which can be purchased in Jackson County and the counties round about and leave the residue in mine hands. What, the residue of the money? Ah. 72. You can trust Joey. He's God's voice box. Now, verily, I say unto you, and we'll sip here. Let all the churches gather together, all their monies. Let these things be done in their time, but not in haste, even though it's expedient. And observe to have all things prepared before you. 73. And let honorable, honorable men be appointed even wise men and send them to purchase these lands, please. 74. 
and the churches in the eastern counties, when they are built up, if they will hearken unto this counsel, may they buy lands and gather together upon them, and in this way they may, may establish Zion. I see. 75. There is even now already a store sufficient, yea, even a, an abundance to redeem Zion. they got to redeem Zion. And establish her waste places. Because everybody needs a dump. <sighs> yeah. And establish her waste places. No more to be thrown down. Were the churches who call themselves after my name willing to hearken unto my voice 76 and again i say unto you those who have been scattered by their enemies it is my will that they should continue to importune, importune for redress and redemption by the hands of those who are placed as rulers and are in authority over you. Okay, 77. According to the laws and constitution of the people which I have suffered to be established and should be maintained for the rights and protection of all flesh according to just and holy principles. 78. That every man may act in doctrine and principle pertaining to the uh, futurity according to the moral agenda agency which I have given unto him that every man may be accountable for his own sins in the day of judgment 79 therefore it is not right that any man should be in bondage one to another that's good except to the church 80 <coughs> And for this purpose have I established the constitution of this land by the hands of the of wise men whom I have I have raised up unto this very purpose and redeemed the land by the shedding of blood. It's all about that, isn't it? Eighty one. Now unto that which I liken unto the children of Zion. Now Unto what shall I liken the children of Zion? I will liken them unto the parable of the woman and the unjust judge. For men ought always to pray and not faint. Which saith, 82, There is a city, there is in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. Man, regarded man. 83. And there is a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. 84. And he would not for a while. And afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her Continual coming, she weary me. <sighs> nag, nag, nag. 85. Thus I will liken the children of Zion. Stop nagging. 86. And them, let them importune at the feet of the judge. 87. And if he need them not... Let them importune at the feet of the governor. 88. And if the governor heed them not, let them importune. Sorry, I don't use that word often, but I'm getting used to it. Uh, importune at the feet of the president. It's just, yeah, make a federal case out of this. 89. And if the president heed them not, then will the Lord arise and come forth out of his hiding place. He's hiding. <laughs> and in his fury vex the nation. 
Because, you know, he's the next authority over the president. 90. And in his hot displeasure, and in his fierce anger, in his time, will he will cut off those wicked, unfaithful, and unjust stewards, and appoint them their portion among hypocrites and unbelievers. That's not fair to lump the hypocrites with the unbelievers. They're two different kinds of folks. <sighs> Most hypocrites claim to be believers, and unbelievers, well, they're like me. <laughs> they're not hypocrites. 91. Even in outer darkness, where there is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. That was the whole verse there. 92. Pray ye, therefore, that their ears may be open unto your cries, that I may be merciful unto them, that these things may not come upon them. 93. What I have said unto you must needs be that all men may be left without excuse. 94. That wise men and rulers may hear and know that which they have never considered. 95. That I may proceed to bring to pass, excuse me, Uh, lost my place. But bring to pass my act, my strange act, and perform my work, my strange work, that men may discern between the righteous and the wicked, saith your Lord. 96. And again I say unto you, it is contrary to my commandment that my will, that my servant, Sidney Gilbert, should sell my storehouse. So don't do it. Uh. Which I have appointed unto my people, into the hands of mine enemy. 97. Let not that which I have appointed be polluted by mine enemies, by the consent of those who call themselves after my name. Damn it. 98. For this is the very sore... Pardon me. For this is a very sore and grievous sin against me. And against my people. In consequence of those things which I have decreed and which are soon to befall the nations. 99. Therefore... It is my will that my people should claim and hold claim upon that which I have appointed unto them, though they should not be permitted to dwell therein. 100. Nevertheless, I do not say they shall not dwell therein, for inasmuch as they bring forth fruit and works meet for my kingdom, they shall dwell thereon. 101, finally. They shall build, and another shall not inherit it. They shall plant vineyards, and they shall eat the fruit thereof, even so, amen. And that's it for 101, and that was a ball buster. Anyway, apparently they're still in Zion, but they're starting to get some grief. He's starting his big land scheme. And this is where he starts losing membership and people start turning on him. This is where it gets good. It's starting to get good. Anyway, stay tuned. It's getting better. I hope you learn something and you'll share it. You have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. Bye.